All right, this question. For each of the graphs described below, either give an example of such graph or explain why it does not exist. So for A, a simple graph with seven vertices with degrees 8, 5, 4, 4, 3, and 1, and 1. So first we have to check by adding up all these degrees. This equals 26, and 26 is an even number. Now, but still, we, it's, we have to check all the degrees, and we see that 8 is greater than the other vertices. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 vertices. 8 is greater than that, so... Now we can do the same for this one. Add up all these. So this is even, which satisfies, and also all the degrees are possible, so this graph exists. Now this one, a simple graph with six vertices with degrees 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, that is a tree. Okay, so what we need to do is, so we have n, we have six vertices, n minus 1, we have five edges, and for a tree with n vertices, the sum of the degrees must be 2 times n minus 1. So this should be the sum of the degrees. Now if we check by adding them up, we can see that this equals 12. So this doesn't exist, because 12 does not equal 10. This one, this one must be true as well. So we have n, we have 8 vertices, we have 7 edges, and we should have 14 sum of degrees. We can check by adding them up. And this does equal 14. So, this exists. Now this is just a simple graph on a tree, same process as before, we add them up, and we check if it's even. So this is 17, so it's not even. That one doesn't exist. This is our graph x, and here we're asked to find the spanning tree of x that contains neither the edge jl nor the edge kh. And we have to explain, and if not, we have to explain why one doesn't exist. So if we just start off by removing those edges kh and jl, and we're going to try to find a spanning tree from here. If we try to do that, it's actually impossible to do so. So... It's not possible because the tree is not connected. Alright, so we have to find a spanning tree of X that contains neither the edge DL nor the edge KH. So, let's say we remove D to L, and then we remove K to H. We remove these two. Now let's try to find a spanning tree here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start from A. I'm going to make sure I touch every vertex. So first A. I'm just going to go down by hand, so B. So we have to hit every vertex once. And this is our spanning tree, so if I just remove the edges I'm not using, this is what it would look like right here. How many different spanning trees of X are there that contain no edge in D, E, F, H, L, A, uh, F, L, H, L? So I put it down in red, these edges. Um, if we just remove them, this is what the graph would look like. And now we can check by removing edges one by one to see if it would create a spanning tree. We know that removing both JL and KL, KH would um, make a disconnected graph. So instead we're going to remove one by one. Um, so let's start off with... Let's start off with one. So DL, let's remove that one. Now we can see that makes a spanning tree. So that works, that's one. Uh, DF, that makes a spanning tree. That's two. And what else? So FG, you can go, it's another one. GH, that makes another one. KH, it's another one. And JK, that also makes another one. And uh, JL, that's another one. But if we try to remove any of these ones, that would make a disconnected graph, so we can't do these ones. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven possible spanning trees. Three A, we have to apply the algorithm given wedges to find a viewer trail in this graph. So first we have to find separate closed trails. So one big one is on the left here, so I'm going to start from A, then go B, go C, go D, E. That's one closed trail right there. Now we write that down. So we have A, B, C, D, E, and we finished off at A. And another one could be starting D, and go on F, go on G, go on H, K, J, 
That one's it. J, L, and then back to D. So write that down. So we started with D, went to F, went to G, went to H, K, J, L, and then back to D. And there's one more left in the middle. So we got F, we start off at F, go to H, go to L, and then back to F. Write that down. F, H, L, F. Now, to find the Euler trail, we actually can combine these three. So we had A, B, C, and then we see we've got a D here, so we can actually just substitute this D. Uh, this, this trail, this closed trail, we did this red one. Uh, so we just chuck that. And then we just keep going from A. And then we need to add the, the next one, so... Substitute this closed trail in, and keep going from the second one. Alright, so in this one we have to apply Kruskal's algorithm to find a minimum weight spanning tree in this weighted graph. So every edge here has a weight. So we start from the smallest weight here, which is 1, and we draw this edge. And then the next minimum weight is this 2 here. We can add this one. And then the next one is the 4. The next one is the 6. And now the next one is the 7. But if I add this 7, it'll make a closed cycle. So we're going to skip this one and go to the next one, so 8. Add this one. And then the next one is 11. And now the next one is 21. Sorry, no, the next one was 13. But I decided to skip that one because it would create a cycle, so go to the next one, which is 16. That would also create a cycle, so go skip that one. And now go to 21. And now every vertex has been filled. So this here is our weighted minimum weight spanning tree. Does every simple graph with 8 vertices and 11 edges have a spanning tree? If so, prove it. If not, give an example of a graph. This is pretty obvious, because I can give an example of one straight away. 8 vertices. And it must have 11 edges. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Alright, so in this graph it's impossible to get a spanning tree because I can't go through here, I can't bridge through there because there's no original edge that I can go over to make a spanning tree. So it's impossible for this one to have a spanning tree. Alright, so in this question we have to use the breadth first search algorithm to find a spanning tree in the graph x from this question too. So this algorithm uses a Q data structure and Qs are first in, first out, so the first element in is the first element out. So we'll start off, we start with the, the smallest element a, so we put that into the Q, append that to the Q, and then we look from a, we can go two ways here, we can go b or e. So since b is alphabetically first, we'll go to b, and now we add b to the Q. And then we go back to A, and then we look, can we go anywhere else? We can go to E, so we go to E. Now we add that to the Q. And now we go back to A, and we look, can we go anywhere else? No, we can't, so we root A. And now, so we served A, we, we had A, and then we served it. And now we, we peek, and we look at, sorry, we don't peek, we look at the first element of, we look at the head element of the Q, which is B. And then we look from B, where can we go? We can go to C. So we go to C. And now we add that to the Q. Now we go back to B, and we say, can we go anywhere else? No. So we remove B. Now E is at the head of the Q, so we go to E, and then we look from E, where can we go? We can go to D, go to D, add D to the Q, go back to E, check, can we go anywhere else? No. Um, now we look at C, can we go anywhere else? No, we can't. We could go to D, but D has already been searched, so we don't go anywhere from C, we just remove it. Now from D, where do we go? We have two options, we have L or F. So if we, if we alphabetically check, A, B, C, D, E, F, F is before L, so we go to L. Sorry, uh, we go to F. Um, then we add F to the Q. Um, 
and then from we go back to D, and then we look, we can go to L, add L to the Q. Go back to D, we can't go anywhere else, so we remove D. Now we go to F, we check where can we go. We have three options, but we don't need to go to L because that's already been searched. We either go to H or G. Which one's first alphabetically? We count, we check, we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So G is before H, so we go to G. Add G to the Q, go back to F. Where can we go? We go to H. Go to H, add H, go back to F. Where can we go? We can't go anywhere. Remove. Now we check L, where can we go from L? We can go to J, so we go to J. And we add J to the Q. We check where can we go from L, we go back to L, we check where we go from L, we can't go anywhere, so we remove L. And now we go to G, where can we go from G, we can't go anywhere. Um, where can we go from H, we can go to K, so we go. K, we add K to the Q. And we go back to H, where can we go from H, we can't go anywhere. Where can we go from J, we can't go anywhere, everything's been searched already. And where can we go from K, we can't go anywhere, everything's been searched already. So that was the BFS algorithm to find a spanning tree. Now we have to use the depth first algorithm. This uses a stack instead of a queue. A stack is last in, first out. So like a stack of books, keep adding books, and the thing you added last will be the first thing that's removed. All right, so we start from A, add that to the stack, and then we look from A, where do we go? We go to B, okay? Now we add B to the stack. Now from B, where can we go? We can go to C. We add C to the stack. Now from C, where can we go? We can go to D. Add D to the stack. Where can we go from D? We can go to E. Add E to the stack. Now we don't have anywhere to go from the stack, so we we have to pop the, from the stack, pop the last element from the stack by removing E. And now we go back to D, and we see which one. What, what options do we have now? We have two options. So A, B, C, D, E, F. F is first, so we go to F now. Add F to the stack. Now from F, where can we go? We have three options: A, B, C, D, E, F, G. G. G is first. Go to G. And now from G, where can we go? We only have one place, so we go to H. And then from H, where can we go? We can go to either L or K, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So K is first, we go to K. And then from K, where can we go? We can go one, one place, so we go to J. Add J to the stack. And then we only have one option again, so we go to L. Add L to the stack. Now we got our spanning tree, so this is what it would look like. Now we consider a graph whose adjacency matrix is this and where v1, v2, v3, v4 are the vertices corresponding to row slash column 1, 2, 3, 4, respectively. Now, if we just label this, we can see, okay, let's start off with v1. v1 doesn't connect itself, and uh, v1 connects to v2, so... And it connects to v3 as well, so... And also connects to v4. Now, V2 connects to V1, we've already done that. And V3 connects to... V V2 doesn't connect to V2, it doesn't connect to itself. It connects to V3, and also connects to V4. And V3 connects to V1, yes. V3 connects to V2, yes. V3 doesn't connect to itself, yes. V3... V3 does... It should be V2 here, and V3 here. So let's double check. So V2 connects to V3, doesn't connect to... It connects to V4, yes. And, yep, so V3 connects to V1, yep. V2 doesn't connect itself, doesn't connect to V4. Now V4 connects to V1, that's done. V2, that's done. Not V3, and not itself. Okay, so this is our graph here. Now we're asked, what is the degree of V4? So if we look at the edges that are going out from it, we see that there's two, so the degree is two. Which of the following gives the number of walks of length six? starting from V3 in the graph. So let's look at the first one. The first one says the entry in row 3 in column 2 of M. I don't think this is the one, because this would just give us uh, V3 and V2, and the length between that. Um, the second one would give us the starting from V3, going to V2, uh, and walks of length 6. Which is not what we want. We just want walks of length 3 for V6. I mean, sorry, V3. So walks of length 6 for V3 itself. And if we go back up, we look at our adjacent matrix. We just want this row to the power of 6. So it would be this one right here. It's the sum of the entries in row 3 of m to the power of 6. So we have to find the greatest length of the trail in this graph from g to d. And we have to give an example of it. So here we can actually use an altered uh, depth first search to do this. So I'm going to start at g and then add it to the stack. And then you assume I would want to go to c because it's an alphabetical order. 
But since I'm looking for the greatest trail, I'm actually going to go to H instead. Now, trails can, you can use, um, you can reuse vertices, but you can't reuse edges. So, next we'll go to C, and then from C, alphabetically, go to B, and then go to A, and then go to E, and then go to F, go back to C, and then go to D, finally. So if we count how many vertices we went through, we went to 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 vertices. So, 9 vertices, and then n minus 1, 8 edges. So this is the greatest length that a trail from G to D can have.